Hello everyone, thank you again for joining me. Uh, today we will be doing a full class. Um, once again, my name is Christina, I'm part of the Mayor's Wellness Committee, as well as the Administrative Assistant and Recreation Clerk for the Borough of Mount Arlington. So, as usual, uh, please, if you have not already, make sure that you speak to a physician before beginning any exercise programs. Make sure you're wearing some loose-fitting clothing. Have your water handy. And as usual, if something hurts or you can't go as deep, don't worry about it. It's just yoga. Do whatever you can. Do whatever feels comfortable to you. So we'll just be going through a typical class, very similar to uh, we, what we used to do when we had our Friday library chair yoga class. So starting seated, knees slightly apart, keeping your back nice and straight, or if you need a, a little time first, you can always just relax against the back of your chair. But I like to have an active spine, making sure you're not pushing out too much, just keeping it as neutral as possible so you don't have any lower back pain. Palms on your thighs, down for grounding energy, palms up for receiving energy, closing your eyes, and just letting it go. Taking anything that may have happened today or may happen later today, and just giving yourself that time right now to be everywhere and here. And if you want, you can play around. I like to take my tongue to the roof of my mouth, make my ujjayi, my ocean breath. Or if you want, you can always relax your tongue down. Just noticing how that feels. Completely up to you. And we'll get into some hip circles here. If you want to test your balance, you can always leave your hands on your thighs or keep them on the side of your chair to keep yourself from falling over. Remembering that it's not about how far you can go. It's more so just opening up that side body as you circle your way around, keeping your sits bones grounded so you don't fall off the chair, making your circles as big or as little as you like. Inhaling in, exhaling out. And pausing and reversing our circles. Last one. back to center. Keeping your hands on your sides or putting them back onto your thighs as we come into our seated cat cow. It's a nice big inhale, really accentuating the chest, letting that collarbone shine. Exhale, rolling your spine all the way back, making yourself into an angry cat. Think of the sensation of sticking your belly button to your spine as you empty out your diaphragm and your lungs, inhaling forward. Exhaling out. Remembering the deeper breaths you get, it has multi-purpose besides opening up your lungs completely. It also actually helps your core, your digestion, your abs. So I always think of my mom to always tell me little breaths, like all the 70s, how they had those little flows. That's not going to do you any good. <laughs> Taking these nice exhales and inhales. That's what's going to help you get that beautiful little bikini body of yours. Sorry, I'm here cracking myself up. And back to center. Bring your arms up overhead, starting with my favorite stretch, which is bending your elbow, placing whichever hand you want to start with first. I'm starting with my right hand first, to the center of your back. Grabbing right elbow with left hand. And if you have that, you can always try to rest your head back. Once again, this is just a different muscle that we don't normally work, but it feels so good. Like if you ever look at cats and dogs, children, 
when you wake up in the morning, the first thing to do is take the biggest stretch you can, getting those arms up overhead. I feel like the only time we really use this type of muscle is when we're like painting walls and things like that. And then you wonder why you're sore the next day. Arms up overhead and switching the hands. Arms coming all the way back up, dropping them to your sides to go straight into circles. Making your circles as big or as little as you like. You can make them nice and wide with wings, or you can keep them nice and stable and centered. Maybe pretending like you're rowing, whatever feels good to you. I grab a hair tie from my pocket. Pausing at the top. Reversing the circles. Doing these circles not only loosens up our shoulders and it also helps with our neck, hopefully to keep us from digging our neck into our shoulders. We want to keep those nice and straight and separate. The longer your neck is, the more the less likely you will have that little booster thing. Last one. And dropping everything back down. Going into our next circles. Dropping your neck to your chest. Inhale, roll into your right shoulder. Exhale, coming back on through towards your left. Inhaling all the way back to your right, making sure you're not bringing your shoulders up, keeping them nice and down. Let your neck do all the work. That's been holding up your head, which is what, 10 pounds? I'm sure it can handle just making these circles. Once again, we're just working into our neck, lubricating our spine. Just being careful not to hyperextend. Last one. Taking it to one side. Coming back on through to the other. And finally letting your neck rest. Opening up the back by doing so. Lifting your head all the way back up. Maybe letting your head drop back a little bit. If this hurts, don't do it. We don't want to hyperextend. Back to center. Moving on to our fingers, starting with our right hand, palm facing me, palm facing down, starting with your pinky, inhale, exhale, switching fingers, inhaling, exhale, switching fingers, inhale, exhale, switch, exhale, grabbing your thumb, swing it underneath, grabbing mid pinky closest to your palm, Stretching that thumb back. Switching hands. Pinky. Just taking the time to really get into the fingers. Just be careful. You don't want to press it back. We're just using pressure. Just natural pressure, not weighted pressure or anything. Just using those muscles, working our wrists, going towards our thumb once again. Back to right, all four fingers. If you can get that thumb, go for it. Stretching out the top of your wrist. Once again, keeping your arms level. It's also helping with your shoulders. You're giving a little extra work on your back. It's supposed to be fun and build up. I like how this feels better. Flipping it over. And to the left, all four, four thumb. Flip it over. Letting it go, shake it 
out, do whatever feels good. Moving down to our ankles, lifting up, right leg first. Just start making circles as big or as little as you like. Painting with your finger, with your with your finger toes, yes. Pausing and reversing. Remembering by having your leg up just a little bit, you're also working into your thigh here. So if you're feeling something there, as long as it doesn't hurt, you're doing all right. Lowering down, lifting up the left circle. Getting all those snap crackle pops out. Pausing at the top, reverse that circle. Lowering down, going into my favorite. Lifting yourself up as we get into our squats. I will be gentle, we will only do five today. So lowering yourself down like you're gonna get down into your chair, making sure that you're trying to get your knees to not go all the way over your toes. I like to bring my hands down with me and we're almost to the bottom, lifting yourself up. Lowering down for four. Lifting up. Lowering down for three, just getting as close almost to your chair, lift it up. Lowering down, lift it up. The last one, and this time as we lower, extend your arms out if you like, or just hovering for a moment. Five, four, three, two, one, sitting on down, extending those legs out. I love squats. They're like the superfood of exercise. Inhaling arms up overhead, exhale, fold it down, maybe lifting up your feet, completely up to you, it's your practice. And inhaling, quick leg lifts, and then we'll do some standing, so starting with your right leg lifted onto your chest, either grabbing in front of the shin or underneath the thigh, wherever it feels good. Once again, back straight, that's the most important part, I don't care if you can only get your foot up this high, having your back straight. Lower it down, switching legs, shin or thigh, whatever it is, nice straight back. Lowering down. By the way, I just want to remind you, I, if you notice, I'm not keeping my legs close together. I'm keeping them spread out to train my brain. In one of the other videos I mentioned, the farther out, you, the more you're in close the shoulder, hip width apart, the greater clearance you have. The closer your feet are together, the better your chance of falling. So using my example again, as I go to the back of my chair, if my feet are close together, I risk falling as I trip over my foot. Having them spread out, I have more clearance to turn. As we come to the back of our chair, we'll start getting into tree pose. I will slide my chair over just so you can see me a little better. Tree is there for some, chairs are for your support. So starting with your right foot, I'm going to root your foot down. I like to lift my toes up to make sure that I'm not scrunching them together. As you press your weight into your right foot, spreading it out, getting that sensation, lifting your left foot up to your ankle or your calf or your thigh if it's accessible or if your pants let you. Whatever you do, do not put your foot on your, in, on your knee. You're pressing against each other. Good osteoporosis move. You're using the weight of yourself to press against yourself. So if you're pressing against a joint, then it goes out. And we don't want to have to recuperate from knees. It's no good. Notice you're having your knee, your left leg out to the side. So it's opening your hips up just a little bit. Chair once again for support. Or if you think you have it, you can always try to raise your arms up. And extending into your tree. Completely up to you. And lowering down, easing off. Don't slingshot. Slingshot's how you get hurt. The strength is built in the slowness. We're moving into our left foot. So rooting all the way down, lifting up those toes. Enough to bring you to kickstand, calf, or thigh. Once again, it's not a contest. Just because some days I can do thigh doesn't mean other days I can't get it away from the calf. Or kickstand for that matter. Just letting it open up. Finding that happy place. Maybe lifting up. By the way, as you're in this pose, you're looking forward, you're finding a drispy gaze, which is an unmoving point. That's where you're going to find your balance. 
by focusing on what's going on all the way outside, so you can lose your balance. Or if you've ever been in a class, you ever see that person that's wobbling, if you're watching them, you're going to start to wobble as well. So find your own moving point. And rise. In tree pose, you find your balance more as you lift yourself up. Getting down into it, think of it as an actual tree. Those redwood trees are not get that long or get that high up by trying to stay down and dwarfed. The more you see trees dwarfed down, the less strong they are. So lift it up, lower it down. And back into our right leg, coming into Flamingo. I'll turn to the side just so you can see. So right leg, rooting in, lift your back foot behind you. If this is it, awesome. If you can, grab it. If you want to trust it, you can play like that. I'm going to grab it just because it feels good to me. And then if you'd like, you can always try to extend out. Once again, finding that drifty gaze, that unmoving point. Find that happy spot. Or stay on the chair. You're relearning your balance. This isn't something that happens like that. It happens over time. It happens with putting the work in. Lowering down nice and easy. Repositioning, lifting up the right, same thing. This is it, awesome. Even if you can't get your foot up and you just have it behind you lifted, that's great. It's all about finding your flexibility, finding your balance. Lowering down. Once again, nice and slow. Coming back to your chair. I'm going to do a ton of standing poses. I don't want to keep us up too long. Just so we have more videos to film. <laughs> so we're going to get into our goddess pose here. So taking your feet out, pigeon toeing out. Great thing about the chair, you can use that as balance. So you're finding a way to just get a little wider than hip width apart. Just enough to sink in. Kind of see on the chair how my pants, my, you can see the bottom of my, uh, the, my thighs underneath the chair. Whatever feels good. Eventually, you'd be like this. That doesn't mean it's happening today. Once again, finding that spot. Find, putting your hands on the chair for support. And we'll pulse here. So pulse down for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Three, two, one, and straight. All the way up, coming into star pose. Beautiful. Coming back to our chair, letting it go, shaking it out, doing whatever feels good to you. Play with our feet one more time, and then we'll go on down. This is one thing that I kind of like to do. Really should have done that at the beginning, but. You could do this again anytime you want. You could do this at home. One thing that I like to do, so I work into my feet. So I don't know about you, but my feet tend to cramp up, especially in the cold weather with the boots. Chair is support. Maybe walk a little bit farther away so you have the clearance. Lift up your heels, go on to the balls of your feet. Roll back, lift up your toes. Inhale, heels. And exhale, toes. Roll. And roll. Roll. And roll. Last one. Roll up the heels. Roll back through. Lift up the toes. Have a seat. Going into twists. Twists are very important to us. Just making sure we do it right. The trick here is you really want to start from your root going all the way up. If you start compromising your back to twist it, think of it like anything else. If it's not straight, when you start twisting it, it's going to get all bendy and whacked out of shape. But twists are good because it also helps keep your shoulders back to protect your spine. It does all kinds of beautiful things. 
So I'm going to start with my favorite twist. So going to the side of your chair, going to the middle part. As long as you can have your feet down, so if you need to, you can always go half thigh or go right just onto your bottom, just so the thighs are there. Back of the chair, putting your hands on either side. Take a nice big inhale. Exhale, start turning to the back of your chair. Your arms are stiff, nice and strong arms, but you're starting with your belly button, going up to your diaphragm, going up to your chest. Once again, nice strong arms. If your arms are floppy, this is what it's gonna look like. Strong arms rolled into your back, shoulders rolled into your back. When you've gotten as far as you think you can go, nice big inhale. Exhale, go a little farther. Pay attention. Look at your knees or feel your knees. I can tell you right now, my left knee went out farther. Do you feel like this isn't doing anything for you? I love this self pose, so I can't come up with a good comment. But if it doesn't feel like it's doing that much for you, you can always try to straighten your knees out. Really pressing into that twist. Do what feels comfortable. Just because I can do something doesn't mean that you should be doing it. And vice versa. There are some things I can never do in a million years. So I'm not going to do it. I'm going to be very proud of you when you do it. And release. Going to the other side. Once again, finding that spot. If you know, if knowing in advance that this isn't doing that much for you, you want to make sure your knees are even to do that extra work, position yourself accordingly. Either side. Strong arms. Inhale. Exhale. Start doing the twist. By the way, the idea of starting from your bottom and rooting your way up. If you turn your head, your body turns funny. It doesn't turn straight. So watch. If you turn like that, as opposed to I feel like I'm Grace Kelly or something when I'm doing something like this. Nice, strong, elegant. That's where the twisting comes from. We don't want sloppy twisting. And we want strong arms. And letting it go. One more, actually, yeah, we'll do one more twist. Let me just speak from this side. So, one of my students was nice enough to help me with this, and I love it. Taking your hands, I'm going to use my left hand, putting it in the back of your chair, in the middle of the seat. Inhale, rolling those shoulders back. Exhale, start twisting to, in this case, my left, taking your right palm to the outside of that left thigh. Inhale. Exhale, maybe go a little deeper, looking over your shoulder. So it's like what we did before, but without the added help of the back. If you feel like you can go a little more, you can always take your left hand or right hand, bring it to one of the spokes on the chair. Completely up to you. You do you. You do what's comfortable. And letting it go. Going to the right. Right hand in the back, inhale. Exhale, start twisting, rooting the way around. So left hand to the outside of the right thigh. Going as far as it feels good. Inhale. Exhale, see if it wants to go a little deeper. Same as before. If you think you can do it, you can always try going for the spoke. I really care about as long as your back is straight. If you're doing this just to do something and show off, no. There's no time for egos when it comes to yoga. Plus, egos is how you get hurt. I don't want you to get hurt. And closing it back off. <sighs> Inhaling arms up overhead. Exhale, folding over your legs. Taking a moment here to let your spine recalibrate. Let it straighten out. And bring your hands back up. By the way, if your hands don't touch the floor, oh, 
Don't worry about it. We'll do another one. Inhaling this time, the legs are going to be all the way up front. Seated forward fold. Exhale. Bowing down to yourself. And coming back up. Get into our hips a little bit more. So as we get into our eagle, seated eagle, take a right leg, crossing it over your left once again, wherever it feels good. I like to have it close down when I'm seated because the more you squeeze in, the more it releases your lower back. One of my ladies, Allison, love her to death. She could, oh, I did it. <laughs> she could do a double cross. She just said that. Like, I got stuff to do. I love her. I miss my seniors. So holding your legs wherever it feels good. This might hurt after a while. If you can actually do a double, it might hurt because you have your legs crossed too high. Once again, do whatever it feels comfortable. You might not like any of this, in which case you can always just keep your legs close together. I don't permit you to bring your legs close together. And this time, because we're also working the outside of our thighs, or sorry, our hips as well. Not a lot of love there. We need to make sure that gluteus medius is nice and strong. Cactusing your arms. Bring your left arm in first, right arm swings underneath for the high five. If this is too much, bear hug. If this is too much, arms together. I like the bear hug. Just hold it here. Closing your eyes if you'd like, or looking around. As long as it doesn't lead to going, I need to test that. Just letting yourself stay here and stay focused. Having your arms crossed or having them up like that, just a reminder, is to help open your upper back. So just finding that spot. Let it go. Let it all go. Before we get into the other side, let's bring our right leg up to a figure four. And I like to have the ankle on the thigh. If this is not doable, just do whatever feels good. One hand on the ankle, one hand on the knee. Inhaling on it. Exhale, fold it down. Find wherever feels good. If you can do it and you can rest yourself, you're using gravity and your own body weight. Once again, osteoporosis thing. You're using your own body weight to press yourself down. Let yourself hang. If this is too much, you can always keep your arms on. Just find wherever you are comfortable. This is your seated pigeon. I love pigeons, so anything you can put me in with pigeon, I'm happy. Find what feels good to you. The fact that you are just spreading yourself out, making figure four, amazing. The rest of it's the pretzel work. Lifting yourself all the way back up. Releasing that right leg on down. Oh, I have a very big hamstring, don't mind me. And getting into our left. So left leg crosses over the right leg. Let's see if we can double it. Yes. I'm very proud of myself. Always growing. I really wish I had people here so I didn't feel so crazy. Arms out to cactus. This time when the right arm goes in, the left arm swings underneath for the high five or the bear hug. Squeeze. Give your back some release, some relief. It loves you, it does a lot for you. Give it some love back. Never losing the breath. Crossing your legs and making your figure four again, setting yourself up once again for your seated pigeon. Maybe noticing that one side's a bit looser than the other. Like I said, my right hamstring, it is tight. Left one, not so much. So I feel more flexible on that side. So again, do you. Do what feels comfortable to you. 
Inhaling if you'd like to. Exhale, folding forward, dropping down. This is not doable, but the nice thing is with me being on video, you can watch Pretty Yogi in the room. So just finding that spot, finding that happiness. on up, easing out. Maybe take a wide-legged forward fold, or if you're out, you can always do closing arms. Whatever feels good. Inhaling arms up overhead. Exhale, folding on down. Whatever feels good to you. Staying there as long as you'd like. Ooh, we did a lot for a little half hour. So we'll get settled into our Savasana once again. We're going to be relaxing. I still want you to keep your legs, at least have your feet hair width apart. Whatever feels good. Release your back to your chair. Relax. Let it all go. Let go of your breath. Let go of any tension. Let go of anything that's happened in our time together. I promise you everything is fine. Just giving your body time to adjust to everything that it just went through. Regaining your muscle memory. Resting. Letting all thoughts that come into your head. Just put them aside for now. I promise you, if they're important, they'll be there when we're done. And let them go. Welcome to stay here as long as you like. You're welcome to go and take this video as many times as you want. Holding poses longer if you'd like to as well. As for our time today, I thank you for joining me. Go at me on this lightning night. Namaste.